Have you ever wondered what truly happens to a body after death, beyond what you see in movies or hear in whispers? The journey a body takes is a natural and fascinating process. In this video, I'm going to demystify the changes, from the moment life ceases to the eventual return to nature. And while this might sound heavy, understanding it can actually bring peace. Death is something every family will face, and the more we know, the less fear has power over us. If you've ever asked yourself what happens after, type yes in the comments. You're not alone in your curiosity. When the heart beats for the last time, the body enters a silence deeper than anything we can imagine. The very first change is immediate. Circulation ceases. The blood, which for years has carried oxygen and life to every corner of the body, suddenly stops its journey. Within seconds, oxygen no longer flows, and without that constant supply, the brain's activity flickers and fades. Breathing halts. For doctors, this is the clinical definition of death, but for the body, this is not the end, it is the beginning of an extraordinary transformation. In the first 15 to 20 minutes, something called pallor mortis begins. Families often describe it as a strange paleness washing over the skin, as if the warmth of color drains away. That glow of life, so familiar moments before, quietly fades leaving behind a stillness that feels both peaceful and unsettling. Soon after comes algor mortis, the cooling of the body. Without the furnace of metabolism burning calories and producing heat, the body gradually begins to adjust to the temperature of the room. A hand that was warm only minutes earlier becomes noticeably cooler to the touch. It's nature's quiet equalizer, the body softly surrendering to its surroundings. And then comes the surprising stillness. At first, muscles relax completely. Families sometimes notice a release of tension in the jaw, the arms, or even in the bladder or bowels. It can be unexpected, even startling, but it is part of the body letting go. It's as though every nerve, every muscle fiber has exhaled at once. But the stillness is temporary. Within a few short hours, another change begins, one that hospice nurses and forensic scientists alike know well, rigor mortis. The same muscles that relaxed so completely begin to stiffen, locking into place. The body, which moments before seemed at rest, now holds itself in rigidity, an echo of the life that once moved freely within it. For loved ones at the bedside, these first changes can be the hardest to witness. They are final, unmistakable signs that the body has crossed into a new state. Yet hospice nurses often remind families that these processes aren't frightening. They are natural, predictable, and universal. In fact, there can be comfort in knowing that what you see is not suffering, but simply the body completing the cycle it was always designed to follow. If you've ever held a loved one's hand in those first quiet minutes, you know the feeling. Type yes in the comments if you've seen this stillness yourself. Your words may help another family who's going through it right now. Hospice nurses often describe rigor mortis as the body's final act of resistance. The moment when muscles, once relaxed, begin to hold firm as if clinging to the last traces of life. It is one of the most recognizable changes after death, yet one of the least understood outside medical or caregiving circles. Here's what's really happening. Every movement we make in life, from lifting a finger to taking a breath, relies on a tiny molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP fuels muscle contractions and, just as importantly, allows muscles to relax again after they contract. But once the heart has stopped and oxygen is no longer delivered to the body, ATP is quickly depleted. With no more energy to unlock the muscle fibers, they freeze in place. The body is not choosing to stiffen, it simply has no energy left to do otherwise. The timeline of rigor mortis follows a rhythm that's both eerie and predictable. Within two to six hours after death, the first stiffness appears. The jaw is often the earliest to lock, sometimes making it difficult for families or caregivers to close the mouth if they wait too long. The eyelids may stiffen next, giving the face a fixed expression that can be unsettling for those seeing it for the first time. 
From there, the stiffness spreads downward, gripping the neck, shoulders, arms, and eventually the legs. By around 12 hours after death, rigor mortis reaches its peak. The body may feel unnaturally rigid, every joint locked in place. Moving the limbs is difficult, even for trained caregivers. And yet, this stiffness is temporary. Over the next two days, as natural decomposition progresses, the muscle fibers begin to break down and the body softens once again. By 24 to 48 hours, rigor mortis usually fades, leaving behind the stillness of advanced death. But here's something many don't realize. Rigor mortis doesn't follow the same pattern for everyone. Temperature plays a role. In cooler environments, rigor develops slowly and lasts longer, while in heat, it can appear and vanish quickly. Physical exertion before death has an effect too. Someone who passed after great physical effort may enter rigor faster because their muscles used up much of their ATP in those final moments. Muscle mass matters too. A frail body may stiffen and release sooner than a stronger, more muscular one. When families witness rigor mortis for the first time, it can feel unsettling, even frightening. But hospice nurses gently remind us, this isn't pain, it isn't suffering, it's chemistry. It's the body's natural choreography, the same for all of us, regardless of age, culture, or circumstance. It's a rhythm, almost like the final verses of a song. First, the body softens in its release, then it stiffens as if holding on, and finally it softens again, letting go completely, surrendering its final grip on the physical world. Have you ever heard of rigor mortis before today? Type yes if you learned something new. While the skin begins to pale and the muscles quietly move through their cycle of release and stiffening, something far more profound is already happening deep within. These are the internal transformations, the quiet chemistry of death, changes invisible to the eye, but unmistakable to those who study them. One of the first and most visible internal shifts is liver mortis sometimes called lividity. As soon as the heart stops pumping, gravity takes over. Blood, no longer circulating, begins to settle in the lowest parts of the body. Within just a few hours, faint purple or reddish patches appear on the skin, most often on the back, sides, or legs, depending on how the body is lying. To families, these marks can look frightening, sometimes mistaken for bruises or signs of injury but hospice nurses and forensic experts know they are something else entirely. They are simply the blood settling, like a still lake after the wind has passed. Once circulation ceases, the rivers of the body fall silent and the blood rests in place. At the same time, an even more intricate process begins at the microscopic level. Autolysis, literally self-digestion. Every cell in the body depends on oxygen to keep its walls intact and its machinery humming. Without oxygen, those walls break down. Enzymes, once safely contained inside the cell, spill out and begin digesting the very tissues they once sustained. It is quiet, invisible, but relentless. Within hours, this breakdown combines with the natural bacteria already living inside the body. We often think of bacteria as something foreign or harmful, but in truth, they have been our silent partners in life helping us digest food, regulating our systems, even shaping our immune response. Now, after death, they take on a different role. Freed from the balance of life, they begin the first step in decomposition, reducing the body's tissues into simpler forms. To the unprepared mind, these changes might sound unsettling. The thought of blood pooling, cells dissolving, and bacteria reclaiming the body can stir discomfort or even fear. But in the eyes of hospice workers and scientists, this is not horror, it is nature's recycling at work. Think about it. The same processes that once fueled growth and healing now fuel the return to the earth. The body does not waste, it transforms. In life, we take from the world around us, food, water, air, warmth. In death, the body gives back, returning those borrowed elements in the most natural way possible. And there is a strange, quiet poetry in that. We are not erased, we are released. Our bodies dissolve into the same cycle that nourishes trees, feeds the soil, and sustains life itself. 
families may find peace in knowing that even in these early internal changes, nothing is truly lost. It is simply change, the beginning of return. If hearing this helps you see death differently, type yes in the comments. Because understanding these hidden processes isn't just science, it's perspective. It reminds us that every ending is also a beginning. By now, the body has already undergone subtle but profound changes. The stillness, the cooling, the pooling of blood, the soft collapse of cells. But in the days that follow, something far more dramatic begins. This is the stage that most people fear, the one movies and television often exaggerate. But for hospice workers, scientists, and those who study the cycle of life, it is simply nature continuing her work. Within just a few days, bacteria deep inside the body begin producing gases as they consume tissues. These gases trapped within the body's cavities cause bloating. Sometimes the abdomen swells noticeably and features change in ways that can be startling for families who are not prepared. The skin may stretch, clothing may feel tighter, and in some cases, fluids may be released. It is unsettling to see, but it is important to remember. This is not pain, not suffering. It's chemistry, a normal part of what every living being eventually experiences. Soon after, the stage known as active decay begins. This is when the body becomes part of the larger ecosystem again. Insects, especially flies, arrive quickly, often within hours of death if the body is in an open environment. They lay eggs, which develop into larvae or maggots, and these small creatures play a surprisingly vital role. What once was human tissue becomes nourishment for new life. In just days, tissues can break down at a rapid pace, accelerated by this activity. Forensic scientists often use these insets as natural timekeepers, able to estimate the time of death based on their life cycles. For many, this stage sounds horrifying, even grotesque, but nature does not see it that way. To the earth, this is balance. Every body, whether human or animal, eventually provides the building blocks for something else. Just as fallen leaves nourish the soil, our bodies nourish the ground we leave behind. Over the weeks and months that follow, the process shifts into advanced decay. Tissues diminish, soft structures collapse, and the once bloated form returns to a quieter state. Much of what made the body recognizable fades. What remains, however, is not nothing. It is the framework, the strong architecture of bone. Finally, we arrive at skeletonization. Depending on the environment, this stage may come quickly, within weeks in hot, humid conditions, or slowly, taking years in cooler, drier climates. Bones can endure for centuries, weathered by time, carrying the silent story of the life they once supported. And here is where we see the ultimate truth. No matter who we are, what we've achieved, or how we've lived, the body's path is the same. From warmth to stillness, from color to pale, from fullness to emptiness, from form to structure. It may seem bleak, but in truth, it is the greatest example of nature's cycle. Life feeds life. Nothing is wasted. If this perspective changes how you see the cycle of life and death, type yes in the comments, because understanding this doesn't just prepare us, it teaches us to honor every moment we have before the cycle begins. Not every body follows the same path of decomposition. While nature has a rhythm that usually carries us from stillness to skeleton, there are conditions, both natural and human-made, that can alter, delay, or even pause this journey. One of the most common is embalming. For many families, embalming is not about denying death, but about buying time. The process uses special chemicals to slow decomposition, allowing the body to be viewed at funerals or memorials. It gives loved ones a final chance to gather, to say goodbye, and to hold on a little longer before the inevitable changes take place. Hospice workers often note how comforting this pause can be for grieving families, even if only for a few days. Then there are the rare cases where nature itself creates its own form of preservation. Natural mummification can occur when conditions are extremely dry, 
cold, or lacking in oxygen. Instead of breaking down, tissues shrink and harden, creating a preserved form that can last for decades or even centuries. History has shown us countless examples of this, from ancient Egypt to desert caves, where the environment itself became a guardian of the body. Another unusual phenomenon is saponification, sometimes called adipocere formation. In this rare process, body fat transforms into a waxy, soap-like substance. It can happen when a body is in damp, airless environments, like underwater or buried in wet soil. Remarkably, this waxy coating can preserve features for years, almost as if time stood still. And then there is modern science. Forensic experts study all of these processes, not to sensationalize death, but to bring understanding. By analyzing how a body changes, they can solve crimes, uncover truths, and most importantly, give families clarity about the final chapters of their loved one's journeys. It's a reminder that even in death, knowledge has the power to comfort. By learning how the body transforms and what can alter that path, we replace mystery with understanding and fear with a measure of peace. So what truly happens after death? The heart stops, the skin loses its color, muscles soften, then stiffen, blood settles, and cells quietly begin their breakdown until nature gently reclaims what was borrowed. It may sound clinical, but there is a strange beauty in this cycle. Life doesn't disappear, it changes form. And when we understand this, death feels less like a mystery to fear and more like a reminder to cherish every moment with the living. If this brought you clarity, type yes in the comments. And if you think it might comfort someone else, share this video. You never know who may need to hear it today.